Hi, this is Maros. I'm an iOS developer working full-time and also building a profitable app business on the side. My main focus for today is to get some freelance work done and then continue working on my new project or sub-project if you will. For those of you who know me, you already know I built an iOS app for traders, Trading Tracker. It's my main side project and profitable business. And for those who don't know me yet, well, I built an iOS app called Trading Tracker. So back to the new project, which by the way I already gave you a glimpse in the latest video, it's Trading Tracker web app. Yes, I'm building a web app this time. And oh boy, it's a struggle, not gonna lie. Let's first talk about the tech stack. As someone not building web apps every day, it was pretty difficult to pick one framework out of the 56 millions of frameworks for web. And I chose Next.js because I like their landing page the most. As for other stuff, I'm using Tailwind CSS, thank god for that, Prisma for database, Supabase to put everything together on the backend side, and Stripe, well, for the money. As I already said, it was not an easy task to choose all of these frameworks and services because there's really a lot of them. It's not like being an iOS developer and having to choose either UIKit or SwiftUI to build your app. Now, you might be asking why I am building a web app for Trading Tracker. The reasoning behind this is that if iOS app makes X amount of money, the web app could probably also make X or even 2X amount of money. Right? The reach is much bigger because everyone is using web and Google to search for stuff. Also, such an app as Trading Tracker should have really been a web app from the beginning. It's not easy to display all of the important metrics, charts and data on a smartphone screen. The app also offers an import feature and the users can upload a CSV file with their trading data and the app will automatically calculate everything for them. It is the most important and the most valuable feature of the app today. Having said that, it's much easier to download the file to your computer and just drag and drop it to the Trading Tracker website than having to transfer the file to your iPhone and do all sorts of shenanigans to do that. Most of the trading platforms and brokers are only available for Windows operating system, which makes the transfer of the files to your iPhone even more complicated. By having a web app, I can also use the web as a marketing tool by writing some blog posts and articles about trading or trades tracking and rank higher in Google search. You see, when I was a web developer back in the day, about 6 years ago, there was no Next.js or Tailwind CSS or any other fancy framework. So on one hand, it's absolutely amazing that I don't have to write CSS to lay out and style my app, but on the other, it's also much more complicated now, I think. Also, I got stuck multiple times when I was trying to resolve an issue and there were like 10 different solutions on Stack Overflow. For me as an iOS developer, it's mind-blowing and quite demotivating to always having to deal with this stuff. But I'm sure I will get a hang of it eventually and will be able to build Trading Track web apps successfully. The real motivation to grow my little side business are the numbers I'm seeing the last few weeks. In January, I surpassed a $2,000 mark in monthly revenue, which is absolutely amazing and I couldn't be more grateful for this. This is the true motor that keeps pushing me, the idea of my little app, paying for my rent and then some. If I want to put it into perspective, I'm almost 50% in my ultimate goal, which is to be financially independent and to live comfortably at the same time. It was not all roses and butterflies along the way though. I wanted to give up so many times, but then I always got back on the horse and kept pushing. This is the reason why building your business is so difficult. It's a mind game and you are playing against your self-doubt, fears, your own emotions. What's been working for me is to always remind myself of what I already achieved. For example, by writing it to my bullet journal or sharing my progress with others. Speaking of journaling, I had a little self-reflection in the last weeks and I made a pretty big discovery about myself. I mean, it was always there, but I was just not seeing it. I was thinking about what I really want from my life and if what I'm doing right now is fulfilling enough. 
to give you a little bit of context, I should probably explain something. In 2023, I started this YouTube channel while working full-time while building my side business. And I often found myself switching focus from one thing to another in a matter of a day. For example, I got an inspirational moment and I went all in on the YouTube thing. I was planning, thinking and writing for weeks while I neglecting everything else, like my app. And I ended up in this kind of situation multiple times over the last year. At the end of 2023, it got me thinking, why is this happening? Is there something deeper to this? I analyzed what I lost the focus to and this is when I made this discovery. It always had something to do with content creation. It was either my YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter or another new project that could be interesting for people on Twitter. And so I made an assumption that if I bring the content creation aspect of things to the forefront, I won't lose focus again simply because this is what I always wanted. Either as a kid doing some Minecraft Let's Play videos, building a blog or a website or even some apps. That's also a form of content for me. So in 2024, my focus will definitely be on content creation. This brings me to my other point, the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance or side hustle life balance. What I also discovered was that I usually lose focus because I go all in on something. For example, I spend all day trying to build this 3D world in iOS app and neglect everything else. Let me just say again the most important part of what I just said. I always go all in. To avoid going all in, I implemented some time limits and restrictions to my calendar. I call it an ideal weekly schedule, where I have some time blocks and I cannot do any particular activity outside of a block of time reserved for that activity. By editing a YouTube video for only 3 hours a day, I can hopefully avoid neglecting other stuff. It's all about time management and discipline to follow the rules I gave myself. I will try to adjust this as much as possible to my needs, because when I made this, I was not really sure what my YouTube schedule would look like, for example. Now, I would like to hear from you. Do you experience this focus switching? What are your strategies to work around that? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you liked the video and if so, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to get more insights into my life as iOS developer and solopreneur. See you in the next one.